In this video, we'll explore four exhilarating games where Hikaru Nakamura masterfully employs the Dutch defense, showcasing his exceptional skill and tactical prowess in this unconventional opening. The first opponent is Ruslan Ponomaryov, a super grandmaster from Ukraine. He starts d4 and Hikaru replies f5 the Dutch defense. This stakes a claim on the e4 square and envisions an attack on the king side by gaining space on this side of the board. However, it also weakens the black king side to an extent, especially the h5 to e8 diagonal. White replies knight c3, aiming to support an e4 pawn break. So black plays d5, establishing a strong grip on that square. Then white develops the bishop to g5, preventing black from moving the e pawn for now. Hikaru carries on with c6, supporting his center and opening up his queen. White follows with e3, opening up his kingside minor pieces, and black plays queen b6, attacking the b2 pawn. White's tricky response, a3, defends the b2 pawn by way of a subtle trap. If black were to capture the poison pawn, then white's knight a4 would actually trap the queen. Black does not take the bait, developing his knight to d7. White's bishop e3 attacks the f5 pawn now that the black knight is in front of the bishop. So black plays e6 to defend. Then white develops his final minor piece with knight g to e2 and will shortly castle. Hikaru noticing that the position for the most part is closed and that knights fare better than bishops in such positions wants to develop his knight without allowing the bishop to capture it. So he plays h6, kicking the bishop to f4, before he plays knight g to f6. After white castles, black develops his bishop to e7, preparing to castle as well. White's knight a4 makes way for a c pawn break while attacking the black queen, so she retreats back home to d8. Then white plays b3 in order to meet the move b5, which black plays, with knight b2 staying out of the way of the c pawn. Black plays a6, securing his pawn, and white breaks with c4. Hikaru ignores this and just castles. White presses on with a4, adding a third attacker to the b5 pawn. This forces black to respond. Black pushes the pawn to b4, keeping the queen side locked. Then white plays a5, preventing black from playing a5 himself to defend the pawn, making the b pawn slightly weaker. Black follows with c5, trying to open the long diagonal for his light squared bishop. White captures the pawn on d5, opening the c4 square so that after black recaptures, in this case with his knight, he can jump his knight forward to a strong square on c4. Now that the long diagonal is completely void of pawns, Hikaru places his light squared bishop on b7 where it peers at the enemy kingside. White, in wanting to preserve his bishop, now that the position is becoming more open, retreats it to g3. Black's capture on d4 opens the c5 square, and after white recaptures with the knight, attacking the e6 pawn, black is able to jump his knight to c5, pressuring white's b3 pawn and defending his own e6 pawn. White jumps his own knight to e5, where it coordinates with the other knight in moving to c6, where it would fork the queen and the valuable dark squared bishop. Black stops this with rook c8, while also activating the rook on the open c-file, and white plays bishop c4, indirectly pressuring black's weak e6 pawn. Hikaru moves his bishop to f6, observing the long diagonal, and white moves his queen to e2, creating a battery aimed at the a6 pawn. It is defended for now, so black plays king h7, getting out of the line of sight of white's bishop. After white's rook c1, activating the rook on the open file, black's knight leaps forward to c3, infiltrating white's territory with an attack on the white queen. She drops back to e1. Then black plays bishop d5 to exchange light squared bishops and prepare a tactic that we will see shortly. White follows with rook c2 to double rooks on the c-file, but this is a mistake. Black captures the knight on e5 and white recaptures with the bishop. Now black has a tactic here to win material. Can you find it? The move Hikaru plays is bishop takes c4. This removes defense of the d3 square so that after white recaptures with the pawn, black can play knight d3 forking the queen and the bishop. At this point white resigns. Even though that after the queen moves and black wins the bishop, white can take the pawn on e6 with a fork and win back the rook, it's just not great for white. Two pieces are generally better than a rook, and black's dominant knight on c3, combined with the fact that black will shortly win the c4 pawn too, just means that white stands no chance. 
Hikaru remained patient in this one, and when he saw his opportunity, he did not miss it, winning the game with one clean and crisp tactic. The next opponent is Simon Agenstein, a Norwegian Grandmaster, and he meets the Dutch defense with the most popular move, g3 to Fianchetto the light squared bishop. Hikaru follows suit with g6, looking to develop his own bishop on the long diagonal, and white plays bishop g2. Black replies knight f6 developing, and white's c4 expanding on the queen side is followed by black bringing his bishop out to g7. Then white plays an interesting move, b4. This prepares to Fianchetto the other bishop, but after black's knight c6, two pawns are hanging and white cannot defend both. The reason the d-pawn is hanging is if white were to play a move like b5, black would take the pawn on d4, and white cannot recapture with the queen because black would have the move knight h5 defending the bishop and skewering the queen and the rook. Black would win the rook in exchange for the knight. Instead, white plays bishop b2 defending the pawn, but leaving the other pawn up for grabs with the idea that black is wasting time by moving the knight a second time in the opening to capture the pawn. White can carry on with quick development, moving the knight to h3, looking at the f4 square. Hikaru does not want white's knight to get to f4, playing knight h5 to capture the white knight if it were to go there and damage white's pawn structure. Then both sides castled their kings to safety. White develops his knight to c6, and black plays e6, making it difficult for any piece or pawn to get to the d5 square. White's e4, breaking in the center, is followed by knight c6, adding an attacker to the d4 pawn. So white plays e5, gaining space and blocking the bishop's attack on d4. Black challenges the advanced pawn with d6 while opening his, up his bishop, and white plays f4 in wanting to preserve a pawn on e5. Black captures on e5, opening up the queen's attack on d4, so white is forced to recapture with the d-pawn to not lose a pawn. Hikaru continues with knight a4 attacking the c-pawn, and with the queens staring at each other via the open d-file, white opts to keep the queens on the board, playing queen a4, defending the c-pawn, and counter-attacking the knight. Then black finds queen d4 check, forking the king and the pawn. White blocks with the knight, moving it off the rim, and black captures on c4 with the knight, winning a second pawn. White moves the knight to b5, attacking the queen two times, and black captures the bishop, abandoning the defense of his own knight, which white captures next. Now black's c-pawn is under attack, and his best move is c6, counter-attacking the knight, but this would lock the light-squared bishop behind a wall of pawns on light squares. Hikaru, in wanting to keep his pieces active, plays bishop d7, adding an attacker to the knight, and planning to meet knight takes c7 with rook c8, creating an irritating pin on the knight to the queen. But bishop to d7 is a mistake. If white finds the move rook a to b1, then he would be winning. This attacks the queen, and the queen's only safe square would be d2, but that would be met with rook a to d1, skewering the queen to the indefensible bishop behind it. Luckily for Hikaru, white misses this golden opportunity. He just regains the pawn on c7 by capturing with the knight. Black goes ahead with his idea of rook a to c8, pinning the knight to the queen. Now white plays rook a to b1, attacking the queen, but with the knight no longer defending the a3 square, white is able to move his queen there safely. Next, white wins a second pawn on b7 with an attack on the rook, and despite missing a win, his position still looks quite good. Black, in a desperate bid to create a little chaos in the position, captures the pawn on g3, sacrificing his knight. White takes back, and after the queen recaptures with check, white retreats the bishop all the way back to block. Now black doesn't really have an attack, but defending a position like this against the likes of Hikaru is no easy task. Black continues with rook f7, indirectly attacking the pinned knight, and making sure that if the bishop were to move, then queen takes a e6 would not come with check. White's rook b3 attacks the queen, so she moves to h4. Then white plays bishop b7, attacking the rook, and black cleverly exploits the pin on the f-pawn to the queen by capturing the pawn on e5 with his bishop. This, however, leaves the rook up for grabs, and white takes it with the bishop before black captures on f4 with his bishop, threatening checkmate on h2. Now white only has one good way to defend against this checkmate, and it would be rook c1, giving the king an escape route if queen h2 were to be played. Instead, white plays knight h3, blocking the queen's vision of h2, but this is a mistake. 
Black has one winning move. Can you find it? The move Hikaru plays is bishop h2 check, opening a discovered attack on the hanging queen. After white captures the bishop with his king, black captures the queen. This type of material imbalance is not something you see every day. Black has a queen and four pawns for a rook and two knights. This means black is up two points of material. But on top of that, the white king and pieces are in precarious situations, with both the bishop and the knight hanging. White captures the bishop on d7 with his bishop, and black captures the knight on c7 with check. White blocks with his knight before black recaptures the bishop, winning a decisive amount of material and inducing a white resignation. Hikaru deftly built a dynamic and imbalanced position, waiting patiently for white's misstep, capitalizing brilliantly when it happened. The next opponent is Super Grandmaster Boris Gelfand, and he meets the Dutch defense with g3. Hikaru replies with knight f6, battling for the center before white brings the bishop out to g2. Black plays g6, looking to Fianchetto his own bishop, and white thrusts forward with c4, fighting for the center and expanding on the queen side. Black plays bishop g7, white develops the knight to c3, and black castles before white plays knight f3, preparing to castle himself. Black's e6 fights for the d5 square, aiming to support a central advance, and white castles. Next, Hikaru plays c6, boxing out the enemy knight, and white pushes forward with d5. Black responds with e5, and white should not allow black to gain too much space with the pawn, so he captures en passant, and black recaptures while developing his bishop to e6 with an attack on the c4 pawn. White plays b3, defending. Black's rook e8 takes the semi-open file, and white puts his bishop on the other long diagonal. Then black develops his knight to a6, looking to advance to a more active square, and white plays knight g5, attacking the bishop. Black does not really want to retreat the bishop, so he plays queen e7, so that after white captures the bishop, he can recapture with the queen while developing her to an active square, before white plays queen c7, connecting his own rooks too. Hikaru's knight leaps forward to c5, coordinating with the other knight in attacking e4. White's rook d1 pressures the slightly weak d6 pawn, so black overprotects it with rook d8, which also centralizes the rook. Then white plays e3 to make sure his e-pawn is safe on the semi-open file. This incentivizes black to jump his knight to e4 so that after white captures the knight, in this case with his own knight, black can recapture with the pawn, taking control of some weak squares in white's camp. White follows with rook d2, planning to double rooks on the d-file to attack the d-pawn, which is black's main weakness. After black pushes the pawn to d5 so that his knight can defend it, white captures it with the pawn, and black recaptures, getting a fully backwards pawn, which means he has no other pawns that are able to defend it. White targets it immediately with queen c5, which also carries an attack on the a7 pawn. Hikaru plays b6, saving his a7 pawn and also attacking the queen, who shifts over to b5, maintaining pressure on the d5 point. Black continues knight h5, offering an exchange of bishops to eliminate white's powerful bishop pair. White declines, moving the bishop to a3, and black persists with bishop f8. The players shuffle their bishops back to their original squares, and white plays bishop a3 again, giving black the opportunity to repeat and get a draw. But he plays bishop e5, and after this back and forth between the two players, black can claim a small victory in the control of the long diagonal. On the other hand, white has the time to play rook c1, getting the open file. And after black plays knight f6, bringing his knight back into the game, white plays rook c2, doubling the rooks. Hikaru thrusts forward with d4 in an attempt to finally get rid of the weak backwards pawn. White's rook c6 hits the queen, so she sidesteps the attack to f5 before white captures the pawn on d4. Black recaptures with the bishop, adding a second attacker to the f2 pawn and opening up the queens to one another. In not wanting to become too defensive by retreating the queen, white captures the queen and black recaptures with the pawn. Then white immediately targets the pawn with bishop h3. Hikaru presses on with e3, and white should not capture the pawn as black would recapture with the bishop, forking the king and the rook. So white takes the pawn on f5 with his bishop, allowing black to capture the pawn on f2 with check, supported by his own bishop. That pawn is awfully close to promotion, so white is forced to move the king to f1 to stop its progress. 
Black's bishop e3 attacks the rook, and with limited options, it moves to b1. Then white's knight leaps to e4, carrying with it the brutal threat of knight d2 forking the king and rook. White is pretty much forced to capture the knight, and black recaptures with the rook. Now things are getting tricky for white, and his best bet is rook d6 to either exchange off black's active rook, or claim full control of his back rank to stop the black pawn's promotion. Instead he plays rook c2, giving black one and only one move to get a winning endgame. But this one's a tough one, can you find it? The move Hikaru plays is rook e to d4. This impels white to resign. The threat is to play rook d1 check, leading to an exchange of rooks and the king being forced off the back rank and eventually the pawn being promoted. Now white only has two decent options here and they are both losing. One is just to capture the pawn with his rook and after black recaptures with the bishop, white would take it with the king, giving black the advantage of a rook for a bishop and a pawn. The other line is a little more involved and it starts with white playing king e2 stopping rook d1. Black would play rook d1 anyway, threatening promotion. White would capture the rook and black would recapture, understanding that white cannot capture the rook without allowing black to promote. White's only option would be rook c8 check and after the king dodges to g7, white would play rook f8 supported by his bishop to stop the pawn from promoting. Then black would play rook e1 check so that his rook is no longer hanging and after the king moves to d3, he would play the fantastic move, bishop c1 to deflect the bishop away from the defense of that rook. Promotion is also threatened, so white would be forced to take the pawn, allowing black to take the bishop, emerging a full piece up for a pawn in an endgame. In this one, Hikaru showed precise positional play in the Dutch defense against a top-class opponent and skillfully converted in the endgame. The final opponent is Leif Johansen, a Norwegian grandmaster, and he meets the Dutch defense with c4 immediately expanding in the center. Hikaru goes on knight f6, continuing the battle for the center, and the white reply is knight c3. Black's e6, opening up his kingside minor pieces, is followed by knight f3 developing. Next, black plays g6 to put his bishop on the long diagonal, and white follows suit with g3. Both sides fianchetto their bishops, and then both sides castle. Hikaru continues with c6, boxing out the enemy knight, before white thrusts forward with d5, gaining space. Black's e5, trying to gain space as well, is met by en passant, opening the d-file and streamlining an attack on Black's weak d-pawn. Black develops his bishop by recapturing the pawn while attacking the c-pawn, so white plays b3 to defend. Then Black jumps his knight to e4, opening two attackers on the knight. White is forced to capture the knight, and although Black could take the hanging rook in the corner, this would hang the d6-pawn and black prefers to just capture the knight with an attack on the other knight. White jumps the knight to d4, blocking the diagonal and attacking the bishop on e6, which would come with a fork on the queen and rook. Black drops the bishop to f7, and white shifts the rook to b1, getting out of the bishop's gaze. With his e-pawn under attack, Hikaru plays d5, defending it, and after white captures the pawn, black recaptures with his c-pawn. Then white develops the bishop to a3, attacking the rook so it sidesteps to e8. White's e3 defends the knight and frees up the queen to focus on other objectives. But after this move, black now has a firm grip on weak squares in white's camp. Knight d2 is the first step to maneuver the knight to occupy those squares. White's queen d2 connecting the rooks is followed by rook c8 taking the open c file. White replies rook c1, immediately challenging the file. So black moves the queen to a5, connecting his rooks in case there is an exchange, and attacking the bishop. White maintains the tension between the rooks, retreating the bishop to b2. Hikaru continues the knight's maneuver with knight e5 instead of capturing the free a2 pawn because he is prioritizing more active pieces. But white's queen b5, offering an exchange of queens, changes things because the queen isn't defending the bishop anymore. Now black wins the pawn on a2 with the threat of capturing the rook on c1, deflecting the other rook away from the bishop's defense. So white retreats the bishop to a1 before black jumps his knight into a dominant post on d3 with an attack on the rook. White cannot exchange rooks without hanging his own rook with check. And on top of that, there is an attack on the f2 square. So white is forced to play rook f1 to defend it. 
Then black calmly plays rook e7, defending his b7 pawn, before white plays f3, trying to undermine black's potent knight. But this is a mistake, and Hikaru capitalizes brilliantly. He plays rook c5, attacking the queen, and after she moves, he plays queen d2 with the brutal threat of queen takes e3 with check. This is just impossible to defend, and white could resign here if he wants, but he captures the pawn on e4, allowing Hikaru to end the game, but not with queen takes e3. With rook a5, an elegant queen trap. After all this, Hikaru demonstrated that the Dutch defense creates dynamic positions and he was consistently able to exploit his opponent's mistakes to emerge victorious. I hope these games were both entertaining and instructive. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more chess content.